G'day YouTube, I'm Nate, and this is Nate Theist. Oh, that was a bit keen. And, oh, dog, no barking. This video is going out on the 20th of February, and I've got a double whammy for you this week. On this day in 1901, René Dubot was born. He's a French-born American microbiologist who also died on this day 81 years later in 1982, which makes this day kind of significant in his life. In 1932, René reported the discovery of the first naturally derived antibiotic that went on to be commercially manufactured and was effective in the treatment of wounds and ulcers in World War II. René is also known for his work on the mechanisms of acquired immunity, natural susceptibility and resistance to infection. As well as all of that, he's also credited with getting penicillin up off the ground. It was originally discovered in the 1920s by Sir Alexander Fleming, who called it mold juice. Mm. But it didn't really get any traction until the 40s, largely due to Renee's work. So thanks, Renee. Great work. This week, I'd like to introduce a new segment, the science of complementary and alternative medicine, or as I like to call it, scam. Thanks to some suggestions from Napiest viewers, I was going to talk about immunization and the immunization debate this week, but in my research, I discovered something that I found a little bit more terrifying, so I thought I'd talk about that instead. Now, don't worry, I will come back to immunization, but for now, I'd like to deal with something a little bit scarier, homeopathic immunization. I think many people are aware of homeopathy as an alternative to conventional medicine, which I'm just going to call medicine from this point on, since that's what it is. Homeopathy is for people who like to take a more natural and holistic approach to their health and well-being. What most people don't know, though, is that a homeopathic preparation is just water, unless you're taking a pill, in which case it's just sugar. The way homeopathy works is it's based on the like cures like principle. The idea being that if you take a small amount of a substance that causes something like a headache or stress or tiredness, then your body can react to it and it can trigger your body's natural healing abilities to help you overcome your problem. So it sounds good, right? Not unlike immunization, where you get a small amount of the thing that makes you sick. In the case of immunization, it's usually uh, an inert live virus or a dead virus that has the same or similar surface proteins to the thing you're trying to combat. That lets your body mount an immune response against this thing that's not gonna make you sick so that you have antibodies primed and ready for when your body does come into contact with that disease. The problem here though is the science behind homeopathy. It's based on dilution and succussion. So what you do is you take a little bit of the substance that you want to use as the base of your preparation and you dilute it with usually one to 10 or one to hundred parts of water, depending on the type of homeopathic preparation you're making. Mix it all together, then bang it around a bit. The smacking about or succussion is, is really important. Then you take a small amount of your diluted substance and then mix it again with either 10 or hundred times the amount of water. Make sure it's mixed well, bang it about a bit, smack it around and then do it again. So take a small amount, dilute, bang it about, small amount, dilute, bang it about, small amount, dilute, bang it about, and again, 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 and again. Okay, that's enough. So the idea is that the more you dilute it, the more potent it gets. And that's because of the succussion. So the banging it about, that releases the vital energy of your substance into the water. So the water has a memory of that molecule, of that substance, of that whatever it is that you want it to be. And it can be some pretty horrible things. It could be just salt or it could be phosphorus, it could be arsenic, chlorine, it can be anything. So it's based on a medical grimoire of, uh, of substances that are meant to help or cause certain issues. Largely not proven at all. Sounds good, right? I mean, that's what you do with herbs, bang them about a bit and they get more potent. That should work for chemicals. No, it really doesn't. Especially when the diluting makes it more potent according to homeopaths. Essentially, to get the best dilutions according to homeopaths, you need to dilute your substance so much that the chance is that there's not actually a single molecule of your original substance left in your preparation. That's right. It's just water. I think Richard Dawkins explains it best. Even the sea isn't big enough. 
for the really approved homeopathic recipes, in order to get one molecule of the active substance, you need to imbibe all the atoms in the solar system. To science, just doesn't make sense. Thanks, Richard. So it's essentially just expensive water. And the best bit is they then give you a dosage recommendation. Say, take two drops of your magic water and put it into a glass of water. That, that makes sense, right? Brilliant. The weird thing is that the water you're getting out of your tap has actually got more chance of having a molecule of that active substance in it than the preparation that you've just bought. So what's the harm? Taking some water, even if it is magic water for your stress or your headache or your cough or whatever, probably isn't a bad idea. It probably isn't going to hurt you. And if anything, you might get some benefit from the placebo effect. The issue here is really when homeopaths take a step away from just prescribing for the non-specific symptoms of everyday life into the realm of infectious disease. Homeopathic prophylaxis, sometimes referred to as homeopathic immunization or vaccine, is made following the same principles. This time the preparation is called a nosode, from the Greek nosos for disease. Instead of using something like chlorine or sulfur as the basis for the preparation, instead a nosode uses the pus, blood, mucus, sputum, urine, feces or diseased tissue from an infected patient. I'm just gonna let that sink in for a sec. Poo water. Yeah. Luckily, because of the homeopathic preparation techniques, chances are you're not getting a single molecule of any of these things in the preparation that you buy, which is why they're allowed to be sold at all. The real problem here is for parents who fully believe in immunization, but also have a bit of a slant towards natural or holistic healthcare and decide to take the child instead of to a doctor, to a homeopath. Give them some expensive water and hope that they're fully protected against a wide range of horrific communicable diseases. Because homeopaths are lying to them. There's actually already been a case here in Australia that's come to the attention of the media in Queensland last year, where a mother did exactly this, thinking she was doing the, the right thing in getting her child immunized. She just didn't understand what homeopathy was. Now I should make it clear, in Australia, homeopaths don't tend to use the terms homeopathic immunization or homeopathic vaccination. Instead, they call it homeoprophylaxis or homeopathic prophylaxis. So the official position of homeopathic groups, particularly in Australia, including the Australian Homeopathic Association and the Australian Register of Homeopaths, is that patients should seek conventional vaccination in the first instance. Though the advice isn't always easy to find and is often hidden amongst a whole bunch of stuff that says that homeoprophylaxis is actually a good thing. They use words like, oh, it's controversial or maybe there's still work that's ongoing, making it sound like it's legitimate even though there's no evidence to suggest it is. If a parent still wants to follow the homeopathic treatment route, they can do so as long as they sign a statement that says that they've read all of the relevant information and that they haven't been under any pressure from the homeopath. With Australian immunisation rates around the 92% mark, the real problem here is parents who believe their children have been fully immunised even though all they've had is some magic water. Even when they've read all the documentation, including stuff like this, that just make up controversy that isn't really there. And the problem is that they may believe that homeopaths are real medical doctors, or at least qualified medically somehow, have real medical experience and are offering real evidence-based medicines. That's simply not the case. Add in fears of autism and the risk of other adverse side effects, as vanishingly small as they may be with conventional vaccines, and parents who actually want their kids to be healthy may end up going down this route. Worse, there are kids who actually can't be vaccinated because we know they're going to have an adverse health reaction to an immunization. So this puts them at risk of actually contracting completely avoidable diseases because our community immunity is lowered. The worst bit is that homeopaths are moving from the realm of silly magical cures for headaches and problems in your love life to a real public health risk. We know immunization works. I mean, who's getting smallpox these days? We know that we can eradicate many of these diseases through vaccination. 
The problem is throw in homeopaths and all of a sudden you've got people getting sick that don't need to be getting sick and you've got a problem that could persist for many generations to come. Instead of getting rid of these diseases, we're gonna to have to continue to put up with them. So maybe it's not such a big deal in countries like Australia and other Western nations where we have access to some pretty good medical care. But in developing nations where just getting to a healthcare facility might be really difficult and when you get there, the level of quality of care might not be the best, this can be a really big deal, especially when we're dealing with a disease that there's no need to be dealing with. It could be completely eradicated. Getting rid of these diseases completely would be of most benefit to these developing nations. And it's completely within our reach, as long as we prevent homeopaths and their like from playing with the serious stuff. And don't think I'm done with homeopathy yet. There is still a whole bunch more stuff that I've got to talk about. At the end of the day, if you want to be treated for that odd feeling you get around strangers or for the thumping headache that you've got the morning after a big night, sure, go see a homeopath. Probably won't help, but probably won't do you much harm either. If you have a real medical issue though, or a real medical concern, you need to go and see a real medical doctor. Just remember, if symptoms persist, please see your doctor, your medical doctor, the one in the doctor's office with the certificate from a school of medicine. Okay, some uh, quick updates and stuff from my last video. First of all, I said that Miles had received the DMCA takedown notices and had complied. I also said that I hoped that he would fight back. In the comments section of my video, you'll see a comment from YouTuber Science of Sarcasm that says, Miles didn't have any choice with the videos. When YouTube receives a DMCA, the videos are taken down automatically. In order for Miles to get them back up, he has to file a counter notice with all of his personal details, which could be used to hassle him in real life. Luckily, Miles didn't have to do any of that. As of recording, all five of his videos are back up on YouTube and completely visible. In fact, if you search for House of Numbers, one of Miles' videos comes up as the second option on the list. So excellent. A great win for Miles and for rational and critical thinkers everywhere. His case actually garnered quite a lot of media interest from around the world. I'd like to thank all of you who watched my first video. Uh, whether or not you did anything about it, just adding your weight by watching and sharing my video may have had the tiniest bit of an effect on the outcome. Last thing I want to talk about, I received a series of tweets from a user called The Expat or at Leo Ronan 69. In these tweets, he said, why not debate them? You haven't presented anything here. I'm sick and tired of little whiners who don't debate. Come on, I love a good fight. Yeah, okay. So because I'm not getting in a Twitter battle with anyone, I'll deal with it really briefly here. And as far as I'm concerned, that's gonna be put to bed. So the reasons I won't debate. First of all, all the links that he provided were just really poorly designed websites filled with tons and tons of content that presented a lot of opinions, asked a lot of questions, didn't provide any answers or any facts. If you have a look at these websites, you'll see that these people are not just AIDS deniers. They're also anti-immunization, anti-GMO, anti-science and anti-sanity. And finally, to debate these people to only legitimize their position and would suggest that their position is something that is worthy of debate, which it isn't. Giving these people any more airtime is a dangerous thing and should be avoided at all costs. So for now, I'm really happy that Miles has everything sorted. Well done, man. Keep up the good work. Uh, I'll keep an eye on the situation and let you guys know if anything develops. Well, there you go. It's my second rant done. Now, if you like what you've seen, hate what you've seen, or if I got something wrong, let me know. Leave a comment below or tweet me at Nate Byrne. That's at the letter N, the number eight, B-Y-R-N-E. And use the hashtag NateTheist. Subscribe if you want to encourage me and link this wherever you care to share. Links for everything I've talked about are in the description box below. Thanks very much for taking your time to watch this. I'll catch you next time.